you remember, we kind of stated this, and we kind of stated it um, unequivocally. We just said, yeah, it'll always work, right? It's always worked for us for differentiation, right? But does it really always work? Now, let's have a look at this, right? Let's, let's think of some examples of n, right? And will they actually work, right? Well, if I say, let's try thinking about this guy. Now, I'm deliberately writing it in a form that doesn't make it immediately apparent, like, okay, what am I supposed to do with this, okay? It's not a polynomial, which is actually critical. How would I write that in index form? Ooh. This, yeah, this is x to the power of negative 1, okay? Now, if I think, oh, that's okay, it's an x to the power of n, so I'll just, I'll just do the thing I did before, right? I'll bump the power up, and then I'll divide by, uh-oh, <laughs> right? Now, you can see, therefore, you can see, therefore, right? In fact, there's a, um, there's a particular case for this that you, you must say, you must say, except x cannot equal, it can't equal negative 1. Doesn't work for that case, right? Okay. Now, what's interesting is, okay, I found a case where it doesn't work. Is it because there's a negative power there? Is, is that the problem? Um, it doesn't take that much to verify or, or uh, disprove whether this is a problem, right? Well, why don't we try another power? You try another power? Two. Yeah, why not? Let's, let's try uh, the derivative being x to the power of negative 2. So this is 1 on x squared, right? Does it work? Well, let's just give it a shot, right? Um, I'm going to increase the power, right? which gives me minus 1. Just watch out for that. You know how I said, oh, we're shifting gears, right? A very common error is to say, oh, it's a 2. I know how to increase 2. It turns into 3. Oh, wait, <laughs> right? That's, that's reducing the power. It's getting smaller, not bigger. So I've increased the power, and then what do I do? <laughs> I'm going to divide by negative 1. So this is my answer. Okay? Plus a constant. Okay. Now, does it work? Does it work? So this is, um, this is this, right? Now, you've got two ways to know. I need another color. You've got two ways to know that, um, we haven't screwed up. We, we did it exactly right. In fact, this rule, right, this anti differentiation rule, it works for every case except for that one. It works everywhere else, okay? Let me quickly illustrate for you why we know that this is the case. Um, the first way is just this um, going through this process, right, but doing it the normal way. Just differentiate that thing. Minus 1 on x plus the constant. What happens to the constant? It goes away. Disappears, as you'd expect, right? What happens to the minus 1 over x? Now we're in differentiation mode, right? You've got to you shift gears, okay? Shift gears. You bring the minus one out the front, which cancels. Thumbs up, and then you reduce the power by one, which gives you x to the minus two. It all looks good, okay? Now we can really, really confirm by saying, hold on, okay? I know what these things are. We've done a whole load of these, right? What does what does this guy look like? What does he look like? What kind of graph is it? It has a name, starts with an H. It's a hyperbola, right? It's not the ordinary hyperbola that you're used to. It's the ordinary hyperbola flipped upside down, okay? Because there's that minus sign, right? So our normal hyperbola is here and here. So the hyperbola I'm going to be interested in is here and here. Okay, pause for a second. Now, this is my graph of dy on dx, right? At least it's one of them, okay? Um, no, sorry, this is my original function. Pun. That's where I've ended up. This is one of the primitives. Okay. Now, what does this graph look like? This is the derivative. I really should have drawn it upside down. Okay. Minus one over x squared. What kind of function is it? It's um, has it got some symmetry? It does, right? It's an even function. Okay. So this is my graph of y. Here's my graph of dy on dx. Okay. Because I've got one over x squared. <coughs> x squared is always going to be positive, right? Uh, except for zero, but that's a discontinuity, so you don't worry about it. So therefore, since x squared is positive, 1 over x squared is also positive. Like the reciprocal of a positive number is itself positive. Does that make sense? 
So in fact, the graph you're getting is this guy. And you've got an asymptote there, an asymptote there. You can go ahead and check y. Okay? Now, d does that make sense? Is this the derivative of this? And you bet it is, right? Look, I'll get out my green for gradient. And I'll say, tell me, increasing or decreasing? Increasing? It's going up, right? It's going up. It's going towards infinity, right? That's what I want it to do. Now I have a look at this branch. Is it increasing or decreasing? Increasing. It's still going up, right? Increasing, increasing, but increasing. Slowly. But it's slowing down. And it's going towards zero because there's asymptotes here as well, right? So not only algebraically can you confirm, yeah, it checks out, um, but visually using this geometry that you know of, you can also confirm it, okay? And going back to that is really powerful. I'm going to encourage you to do that. There's a reason why this is where the topic goes, okay?